Hey guys, it's Marcelo and Estrella here, the creator and one of the co-hosts of Radio 815. What is Radio 815? It's a podcast celebrating the life and the career of writer-director J.J. Abrams. And I just wanted to let you know that along with my co-host, Matt Crandall, new episodes are posted every Friday at 8.15. So if you love film and TV, and specifically talking about J.J. like we do, Come and join us, won't you? Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Radio 815. Uh, This is episode 5. I'm your host, my name is Marcelo Inostroza. And today, as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Matt Crandall. And on today's show, we'll be talking about the season three premiere of Felicity entitled The Christening. With all that being said and out of the way, uh, Matt, what did you think about this season three premiere of Felicity? Yeah, I really like this season three premiere. It's sort of, you know, setting the pieces in motion for a lot of the rest of the season while easing us back into where the characters have been over the last three months over the summer break, but also feeling like a a fairly standard episode of Felicity for the most part. And this one was written by J.J., so he did write the, the premiere for season three and directed by Steve Miner, who actually is mostly known for horror, has done some amazing movies, um, House, Friday the 13th, Part 2, 3, Lake Placid, Halloween H2O, but he also directed Forever Young. So him and JJ had a, you know, a working relationship before Felicity, and then being, you know, the co-showrunner, he brought him in to, to do an episode of this, which is kind of interesting, because this episode doesn't have any horror elements at all. Uh, and that's sort of Steve Miner's bread and butter. But what they did do in this is we continue over Sean's documentary stuff so that we can catch up with people and they can talk to the camera and sort of give the exposition of what they did over the summer because uh, Sean is still making his documentary. So, you know, Felicity has ditched the the tapes to Sally last year. And that sort of was the new thing to ease us back into where everybody has been during the gap. And I really like that when it started, we have Felicity and she's talking about how she can't wait to see someone she hasn't seen for a couple of months. And, you know, he was so excited that she had to talk to him on the phone before he got there. And then it's Javier (laughs) and uh, it's not Ben. And that was uh, really funny to me. The thing that I really found interesting about uh, this season three premiere is um, as we mentioned uh, in the tail end of last week's episode, um, the show is doing a great job of maturing its cast and its characters as we go along here. And one little wrinkle that I absolutely loved about this episode is that um, Felicity uh, comes upon this apartment because one of Javier's friends or flatmates is mm. moving to Chicago. So she comes across this this awful, dilapidated shithole. <laughs> like, like in the worst part of yeah. New York. And she gets a bright idea to rent this place out so it can be a place for her and Ben to stay when Ben uh, eventually comes back into town. And when he does so, Felicity is so excited and so enamored with the with the possibility of living with Ben that she doesn't that she doesn't actually see that her the apartment that she chose is a godforsaken disaster. I mean, there's there's roaches all over the place. The pi- the, the the pipes are leaky. The, the there's there's paint flaking off the walls. It's awful. There's there, there's there's roaches all over the place, and I just love the fact that this episode uh, sort of carried on that theme of watching our characters grow up and watching our characters deal with what it's like living with one another and what it's like having responsibilities and certain things like that. Yeah. And how you kind of stumble when you are, you know, trying to fulfill these responsibilities where Felicity is so excited thinking that this can be a place for her and Ben to make like their life together that she doesn't ask like the important questions. 
how is this place to live? Why is your friend leaving? You know, and and doesn't do the research. And then we find out it's a horrible cockroach bug infested place with bad wiring and awful noisy pipes uh, and just all that money pit sort of stuff with the apartment is really funny. And, you know, it's Felicity follows her heart and acts impulsively. And Ben just kind of goes with it, even though he's he's not into it at all. And of course, by the end of the episode, they sort of have it out and realize that this was not the right step. And then you add in the the comic relief of the hot uh, neighbor having to have a bath. Um, And it's just that part of the episode is so true to life where like, you know, you're so excited to grow up that sometimes you don't do the research that you need to grow up properly. Um, But also just some really funny humor in there as well. No, and actually, I did like the added wrinkle at the beginning of the episode and really all throughout the episode of Sean having to continue his documentary like you stated at the start of the show. But the the, the interesting thing about it is when Sean first started to do this um, last year, and I think he had one uh, uh, episode in season one where he did, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, you can see the cat, the, like Felicity, um, Julie... And Elena and almost everybody else in the Motley crew is so sick of it that <laughs> the second they see Sean with a camera in their face, they like, they like, just they, they, they almost attack him. Yeah. The, the, oh, the, no, the, not so, this so, guy. Yeah. So he's, so he's like, at this point, he's being intrusive. And I love the fact that uh, him shooting his documentary, it, it's like, uh, it's like a, uh, a filter into the, no mystery because he actually thinks of an idea to actually make that a uh, make that a big point about this first episode that he's working on so much so that he makes up a sign that says Noel is missing and then Felicity goes and says what if something really happened to him that's really awful we sh- you should change that you shouldn't do that right and the co- the the cool thing about it is when we do find out what happened to Noel and and, and where Noel went. The fact that it's Richard, the guy that hunts Noel down and tells yeah. the rest of the Motley crew where he is. And when they eventually find him and, and we do find out about what happens to him. I love the fact that he's in a place right now in his life where he's fugly as hell. He's <laughs> making bad decisions and he just doesn't give a shit anymore. Yeah. I just love the fact that we get to see Noel in that quote unquote state of depression about about where his life is. Of course, the cool thing about uh, this season for Noel is that most of our main characters are where Felicity is. Most of, my, most of our main characters came to the show uh, 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 when Felicity did, you know, on freshman year. But Noel is ahead of everybody. So mm-hmm. this is actually Noel's final year in college. So the fact that he just drops everything for the right. thing that he hardly knows was just something so great and so brave by the writers to do. Yeah, and you know that that is funny that Noel is older, so he's experiencing a little bit of a different thing than some of our other characters just because he's in a different space in his life, right? You know, it seems funny, but one year can make a big difference, especially in your early 20s to how mature you are and how you you view the world and your place in it. And I do like that this episode you know, JJ loves mysteries and it sets up two mysteries, one that gets answered and one that doesn't. So of course the, where is Noel? (laughs) And as they uncover that and they go visit Leon, uh, all that stuff is hilarious. And with Noel answers the door and he's basically, you know, drunk frosted tips just doesn't look like the Noel we know. Um, it's so jarring. It's like, what the hell? And of course, you know, him and Natalie are together and even Javier is not quite sure about his own cousin, Natalie. He doesn't really have a lot nice to say about her. And then the other mystery is that we get the one scene of Julie crying and being upset. And, um, you know, Elena tries to figure out what's going on. And we don't find out in this episode why Julie was having a, a moment. Because according to her, the summer was great. And she spent it, you know, with her bio parents before her biological father um you know, passed away because she wasn't a match for the the kidney donation or whatever it was he needed. 
No, and I think I, I think that this episode does a great job um, setting up the Julie character for what would be her her last stand in the show. And I will be honest, the first time I watched the show, I didn't know that um, Amy Jo Johnson was eventually going to leave the show because of family issues that she was having in her real life. Mm -hmm. So I thought that this whole thing was just a setup. And what happens, like, in the next episode or two, I was like, what? Julie's, she's so, she's really gone. Like, is she going to come back or, or is she really gone, gone? Right. And um, I, I was just, I was just really upset and sort of taken aback when Julie stepped away because I have, I will admit, um, uh, Amy Jo Johnson was not my first celebrity crush, but Amy Jo Johnson was... Uh, when I was a really little kid, she was the Pink Power Rangers from the Mighty oh, yeah. Power Rangers. Yeah. So the Power Rangers and, and Amy Jo Johnson, by extension, will always have a special place in my heart, as well as uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar will, because Buffy was the first show I ever watched on television. Yeah. So it's it's that type of thing that when uh, an actor playing a role that you obviously like, when they leave a show, it can be very, very... Um, distressing and sometimes you don't get that closure that you wanted with that character because something happened that wasn't planned you know something happened you know the world got the uh, life got in the way so mm -hmm. maybe JJ actually I can guarantee you JJ didn't get the opportunity to tell the story that he wanted to with Julie Emmerich and I'm, I'm really upset that he didn't get a chance to uh, explore her character more because I really think that he would have done some interesting things with her moving forward. Yeah, I think he would have. And, you know, it was extenuating circumstances. And this obviously puts that into motion. So we won't know, you know, when they finish season two, what the arc with Julie and her bio parents was meant to be. Because obviously, by the start of season three, they had already started to shape it because they knew she had to leave the show. But what's interesting um, is that as like a college experience you know when i went to university there were people who did literally like overnight pick up and just decide that it wasn't for them and just left and like nobody ever saw them again so the fact that that happened on the show echoes stuff that does happen in real life um especially at university where you know somebody is just going through a tough time or finding that you know not in this episode, but I I know that Julie says, you know, New York just wasn't right for her at the time. Um, so that's part of why she has to go. And there are lots of people that I knew a couple in university who literally, you know, it just wasn't the right place at the right time for them. And they disappeared overnight. So it it does happen. And I also loved Amy Jo Johnson since Power Rangers, Pink Power Ranger. And uh, just an aside, um, she is Canadian and makes movies up here. Right. And like, and like two years ago, uh, at a theater 20 minutes away, they were doing a screening of one of her movies and she was going to come for like a Q and a to, to meet everyone. And so me and three friends went and we were the only people there. Oh my God. So it was mortifying for what her, the Q &A? but it was, it was amazing for us because literally Amy Jo Johnson came and she's like, 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 thanks for coming. She, oh she was God. kind of stunned that nobody was there. Oh and so we were apologetic. Like, you know, I, I'm so sorry. Nobody promoted this thing and I just happened to hear about it, but you know, she spent a good 15, 20 minutes hanging out, signed some power ranger and Felicity DVDs and, uh, was just a really nice person. So she's a great person now. And, you know, I'm sure she was then. It was just a, an unfortunate circumstance of real life. And pretty difficult when you're working so hard because, you know, these TV schedules are a grind. Mm -hmm. No, um, uh, you mentioned that Amy Jo Johnson actually uh, has done some film down there. She is actually a Canadian citizen. Mm -hmm. And she was actually on a, a great uh, Canadian action series called Flashpoint, yeah, which was great. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Richard was a part. Uh, the actor who played Richard was on that show. Probably, I was gonna say probably because uh, Rob Benedict films Supernatural in Vancouver all the time, and Flashpoint, you know, was um, out of Vancouver. Yeah, so wouldn't that, wouldn't surprise me at all. That's a great show, by the way. 
Um, the other thing, the other thing that I found sort of funny, well, not funny, but kind of humorous, was the fact that um, with the device of Sean shooting everybody for his documentary, there's a, one scene or a couple scenes in particular where we get to learn a little bit more about um, ha- uh, Javier and you know how 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 he actually suddenly feels the urge to go back to college and earn his degree, mm-hmm. and it's just so funny seeing somebody of that age go back to school and yeah. you know have to go through the process of doing everything and he actually he says something uh, uh very interesting to where he's going to do it for his grand he's going to do it for his uh grandma because when he was young and when he was young and wild he didn't want to really do that mm-hmm. and it, w- it was just so refreshing to see somebody of his ilk Go back to school. I can't remember if he actually sticks it out or if something happens. But... <laughs> that is great, and I love I love that that scene where he said he's doing it for her, but he hasn't told her yet. So he's just going to present her with his like report card when he gets it, and uh, then he realizes he better start studying because if it's a bad report card, then it's not going to be as a good a feeling to present it to her. Yeah, I just I just love that. Um, little wrinkle that JJ put in there. Also, to go back to another point that you said um, about some people in college just eventually pick up their shit and one day to the next they're gone. I spent over... I I went to actually college twice. I spent... I I, I went to college for uh, four times, two separate times. And a little bit about myself here. Yeah. I... I really wasn't ready for the college grind. I wasn't prepared for it. Like, like I felt like a, I felt like a kid who was thrown into deep end and I really couldn't handle it. Yeah. And I could tell you, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pick up my shit and, and, and just leave instantly. But I got to a point where I was like, dude, I'm sinking and there's nothing I can do to stop. And I can't get out of here because it wasn't a, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a, a sleepaway school. It was a, a local College. Right, you know, I, I got to go home every day, but the pressure of college and everything that was going on in my life really got to me. And the only really uh, noteworthy thing that I learned to do in college was screenplay format. The rest of it, I should have crapped the bed and I, I, I ruined everything. <laughs> I, I, I wasted millions of dollars two separate times. It's ridiculous. Uh, which you know, so seeing Julie suffer for more personal reasons in her actual life, but seeing her character suffer with the death of her father, who was played, of her biological father, who was played by, uh, trivia question here, Bradley Whitford, um, yeah. who we only see one time, and who doesn't speak, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that sort of just rang home with me, the fact that she was struggling, and the fact that eventually she was going to have to move away or, or, or whatnot. And I, I really uh, connected with that story thread uh, that we saw Julie go through in this episode. Also, a really funny bit is when Ben actually shows the the apartment that he has with Felicity. He actually, he actually shows it to he actually shows it to Sean, and Sean <laughs> Sean gets a brilliant idea to okay, we got to do something about this apartment. But he doesn't really do anything to help the apartment. What he does is asinine. He buys them like this nineteen fifties <laughs> screening. I, I like, yeah. I've never I, I've never seen it before. It's like no. this big atrocious thing, and I'm like, dude, I thought you were going to help them. Yeah, like you made matters worse. What the hell is this? <laughs> this is not going to help. Which is funny because that's totally like a guy's way of thinking he can help. Like, oh, get her a big TV; she'll love it. Which, of course, is nine times out of ten the wrong advice. Yeah. Um. No, I just, I just uh, really thought that this episode did a great job of uh, moving our characters forward and sort of setting some of the stuff that we're going to see in later seasons. And um, I also like the fact that, once again, Ben is sort of taken off balance by the fact that he doesn't know, he didn't know how hard it was going to be to live with someone. And I love the fact that all throughout the course of the series, rather, Felicity has her growing pains, obviously, but Felicity seems to have her head on a lot, uh, a, a lot better than Ben does. Mm-hmm. Fel- Felicity doesn't get rattled that badly that often. Right. Ben seems to do that a lot. 
Right. And I, I, um, the fact that JJ and Matt and the running staff decided to do that, I thought was great. Yeah, it, it definitely adds an interesting dynamic. And it is one of those things where, you know, Ben is rarely sort of comfortable. <laughs> like whenever things are going too good for Ben, he like starts to question stuff and then realizes that things aren't as good as he thought. Which, um, you know, is an interesting character trait, but again, it's just one of those things that kind of happens consistently over the series, but they do it in different ways to make him grow. So it's it's interesting. Mm -hmm. No, and uh, the the last thing that I, about this episode that I really enjoyed was the fact that um, in the last episode, we understand that Megan uh, spent the summer with Sean and... and in in uh, Megan does an interview piece for uh, for Sean's show. Mm -hmm. and she goes, "Oh, I spent the weekend with my boyfriend." And when she does that, she puts up her 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 first finger to indicate that that Sean's package isn't that big. And I just <laughs> I just I just lost my crap when she did that. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it was something so small, but um, it was it literally was so great. It was so great. <laughs> also, I'm loving the fact that. Uh, Megan is sort of integrating with the rest of uh, our main cast now. Yep. I mean, she's with um, Julie and she's with Elena at this point because uh, she moved into the spot that Felicity was supposed to have. Yeah. And, yeah. and one more final thing. I love the fact that all throughout the course of this episode, we get hints at another roommate coming to the apartment eventually, this, this, this girl from uh, England. But we never actually see her until... Uh, later on in the season. So I, I, I love that uh, little seed that J.J. planted there. Yeah, they lay the groundwork. And uh, having Megan just be part of the gang now um, is great and feels good. And, of course, this episode, also should note, was the first that they had a brand new style of intro. Ooh, yeah. Oh, they, they, totally forgot that. they redid the credits and, um, you know, the theme song. Uh, and it, it just made it you know, a change of pace. They're saying like, this is sort of like a new era of the show um, by ushering it in with a new, with a new beginning. Did, um, uh, um, did you like that new beginning? Do, do you, do you like the new song? Yeah, I think it's okay. You know, the other one was, was simple and arty. Cause like before, you know, it was a black and white intro, no, like, you know, not a jingly theme tune. And then now we move to, you know, it's like a full color montage of stuff that's happened in previous episodes. And we got like this full on pop tune. Um, so they feel wildly different. One feels sort of like a French new wave. And now we're moving into more of like American mainstream TV kind of beginning. But it, it worked for me. No, uh, the reason why they did that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the executives thought that the show needed something. Because at this point, the show was sort of lagging back in the ratings. And mm -hmm. so they did that exclusively to make the show to to to, to put on a new coat of paint, uh, as you were. Yeah. And JJ, who wrote the initial uh, theme, theme song, yeah, he wrote this one as well. Yeah, he he likes to write the theme songs to get those uh, residuals. <laughs> yeah, um, I you know uh, to to be honest, I love uh, uh, the uh, the. Uh, the new version of me theme song from Felicity, but I, I I will admit I'm a purist. I do like the original black and white sort of art artsy moody uh, yeah. one um, as well. All right, so um, like I said, I, I I really thought that this episode was great. Uh, Matt, do you have any final thoughts before we wrap it up here? No, I thought it was a great reintroduction to the series. And like you said, it felt like a fresh coat of paint and it laid the groundwork for the remainder of season three. And I can't wait to dive into that stuff. All right. So on um, on, on a scale of one to ten, uh, uh, what would you give this episode? I would give this one like probably an eight because it, it was mostly light and fun. You know, it just hinted at some of the serious stuff to come, um, but it was solid. I liked it. Uh, with that being said, I would give this episode. I really enjoyed it. Some of the some of the comedic bits were really great. I would really I would give this episode a seven. I really enjoyed it. All right, Matt. So um, with that being said, where can the people find you if they want to talk to you about Felicity or anything else on the interwebs? Best place is on Twitter at Matt Crandall. 
All right, guys. So uh, if you want to find me and come and talk to me about Felicity or whatever subject or the fact that you hate me as a podcast, uh, hate me as a podcast <laughs> host. Uh, That'd be rude. Can, yeah, yeah. You can come and <laughs> shout at me. Um, I'm on Twitter at uh, CreekFanatic88. So come and tell me how much I suck on there because I love my hate mail. All right, guys. But uh, that'll do it for our review of... Uh, Felicity episode one entitled The Christening for my co host Matt Crandall. I am Marcelo Estroza saying we'll talk back soon. <laughs>